This video is going to go over some of the questions on the exercise on Khan Academy with the title and scratch shapes. This exercise was assigned to you on the fourth week of distance learning. Let's look at the first question. Angle C is inscribed in circle O. So angle C is right here. It's being made up of these two lines. And being an inscribed angle just means that all of these points touch the circle. Another thing we're given is that line AB is a diameter of circle O. That means that this line going up and down is a diameter, therefore is splitting our circle exactly in half. Let's look at the implication of that. Because this is a diameter, that means that arc B A is going to be 180 degrees. And I know that because 180 is half of 360, and 360 is the whole circle. We are being asked to find the measure of angle B. So angle B is what we want, which is this angle right here. Okay, let's look at what we are given. We are given that angle A is 71 degrees. Now what do I notice about angle A? Angle A is being made up of these two lines. And all of those endpoints touch the circle, which means that this arc, arc BC, is going to be double of whatever measure this is. So let's solve for that. 71 times, let's make that nicer, times, 2 is equal to 142. So this arc, this pink arc, is 142 degrees. Again, just to reiterate, the rule is that whenever you have an inscribed angle, the arc that it subtends is always going to be double. Okay? So if we are looking for what angle B is, it seems like a good step to do is to find the measure of angle A, sorry, to find the arc AC. It's going to be pretty easy to find the measurement of arc AC because we know that the whole thing, the yellow arc is 180. We already have 142 as the pink arc. Then all I have to do is to find whatever is missing. So from 180, I'm going to subtract what we already have, and what we already have is 142. So I'm going to have 180 minus 142, and that's going to give us 38. So our AC is going to be 38 degrees. Now if arc AC is 38 and angle B is an inscribed angle, we can take half of 38 to find what measure this is. So let's go ahead and take 38. And if you're taking half of something, you're going to divide it by 2. Half of 38 is going to be 19. So angle B is 19 degrees. Go ahead and write that. Okay, let's try another problem. Okay. Angle C is inscribed in circle O. Again, that means that if this is angle C, all the endpoints touch the circle. Line AB is a diameter of circle O, meaning this is cutting um, the circle exactly in half. We are being asked, what is the radius of circle O? So this is a little bit different because now we are trying to find the measure of the radius rather than um, the angle measure. So let's see what we're given. We're given that this is 6. We're given that this is 8. We're also given that this is the diameter. And if I look at these two legs, I can see that it subtends this arc. Okay, 
So you see how all both the legs end up touching this yellow arc. And because this is exactly half of the circle, this is going to be 180 degrees. And if that's 180 and this is an inscribed angle, this angle is going to be half of the arc. 180 divided by 2, or half of 180, 180 over 2, is going to be 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Okay, so this is a right triangle because we have a right angle. All right. We know that whenever we have a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find any missing side. Pythagorean's theorem states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. a and b are always going to be the legs of your right triangle. C is always going to be the hypotenuse. A in this case is 6, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. The place of A, so 6 squared plus B in this case, the length is 8, so I'm going to plug that in as 8 squared is equal to C squared. Now C squared is this whole hypotenuse. Because if you just turn this triangle a little bit to the left, you're going to have a right triangle that will look like this. Right? So these triangles are the same. I just turned it a little bit. This is 8 units, this is 6 units, and this is the hypotenuse or the diameter we are looking for. Okay? So let's go ahead and simplify. 6 squared is 6 times 6, or... 36 plus 8 squared is 8 times 8, or 64. And c squared stays as c squared because we don't know what it is yet. Let's go ahead and simplify. We can combine these two together. They are like terms. 36 plus 64 will give us. 100 equals c squared. Now the last step we got to do is we have to find a way to get rid of that exponent of 2. A lot of students will say, oh, let's divide by 2. But remember, the only way you can cancel the square is to take the square root. The opposite of squaring something is not division. Okay, the only thing that will cancel this is taking the square root. So now that that is gone, c will then be equal to the square root of 100. Now in this case, 100 is actually a perfect square. What is the square root of 100? Well, you know that 100 is just 10 times 10. So the square root of 100 is 10. Meaning, in this triangle, going back to our drawing, this is 10 units long. This whole thing from A to B is 10 units long. But is that what we want? We are being asked to find the radius of circle O. The radius is only half of the whole thing. So if I were to move it over to this drawing, I only want about right there. I want half of this whole thing. Now if the whole thing is 10, then we can take half of that by dividing by 2. You can do this in your head. 10 over 2 is 5. So half of that is 5, meaning the radius we were looking for is 5. Now in this next question, we've got circle O. 
where the measure of um, arc SV is 120 degrees. So again, like always, I'm going to take my given and I'm going to write it down. So SV here is 120 degrees. We are being asked, what is the measure of arc VU? Meaning, what is the measure of this arc right here? Now there's another piece of given that I see. I see that angle STU is given to us as 82 degrees. I also notice that the angle STU is an inscribed angle because all of the endpoints of this angle touch the circle. And that means that if I take the measure oops, of this whole blue arc, the measure of the whole blue arc should be double of this inscribed angle. So let's take 82 and double that by multiplying by 2. 82 times 2 will give you 164. That means that the whole blue arc is 164 degrees. Now if the whole blue arc is 164 and the pink arc is already 120, what can we do to find this yellow arc measure? Well, what we can do is take away what we already have. So if the whole thing is 164, we already have 120. Let's subtract those from each other. 164 minus 120 will give us 44 degrees. So this yellow arc is going to be 44 degrees. Now what I want you to notice is how we really used our colors wisely in this problem. Um, really color coordinating. Can you imagine if we didn't have a lot of colors, all these lines and numbers will get really confusing. So if you have something at home that you can use like a highlighter or a colored pencil or something online that you find, I really believe, um, just like how I demonstrated it here, that it will help you better understand how to solve for these problems.